Gerald Banstead had told Fryn that if they were to marry in June, they couldn't possibly honeymoon until October. He was all too aware of the perils of marrying a girl twenty-four years younger than himself to add to them by taking a conventional honeymoon. <laughs> A village from which, it was said, persons of sufficient longevity might hope to reach Liverpool Street. <laughs> Who said that? Bertrand Russell. Uh, I wonder if I'm of sufficient longevity to reach Hollyhaven. Gerald. I know, I know. I'm like a fine wine. Mature, fruity. And deliciously full-bodied. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we go so slowly when it's so flat? Because the engineer laid the line up and down the hills and valleys instead of cutting through and embanking over them. How do you know? Gerald, you said you hadn't been to Hollyhaven before. It applies to most of the railways in East Anglia. So that even though it's flatter, it's slower? Time matters less. I'd have hated going to a place where time mattered, or that you'd been to before. You'd have nothing to remember me by. <laughs> you are funny. Come here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. Are you all right with those, darling? Yes. The platforms are long for such an out of way place. Built for the big expresses, which have long since gone elsewhere. <laughs> Excuse me, would you mind? I think we'll have to help ourselves. Look at that. Tickets, please. I'll get them, Gerald. Holly Haven, eh? Seems very nice. Where's the... B oh. Sorry. Where's the bell? They're starting early. Every reason to be in good time. Can you please tell me the way to the Bell Hotel? Have you a room booked? Certainly. Tonight? Of course. It's them Pascos. Yes, that's the name, Pasco. We don't use the bell, but you'll find it in Rack Street. Straight ahead, down Station Road. Then down Rack Street. You can't miss it. What narrow streets. <laughs> yes. They follow the lines of the medieval city. Before the river silted up, Hollyhaven was one of the most important seaports in England. Really? Oh, yes. <clears throat> oh. Where's everybody got to? There's nobody at all. Where's the hotel got to? Oh, poor Gerald. Just look, let me help oh, you I'm with fine, those cases. Fine. Must be early closing. Why are they ringing that bell? Is it a funeral? A bit late for a funeral. Well, I hope it isn't going to ring all... Look! What? We've passed it. How could we have done that? Well, see, where that big old bell's hanging. Well, that must be it. How could we have done that? Oh, it's nice. Mr. and Mrs. Banstead? Yes. I'm Hilda Pascoe. Don, my husband, isn't very well. I'm sorry to hear that. It's his stomach. Ever since he was a kid, Don's had trouble with the lining of his stomach. Well, we came here for the sea air. Now, the doctor said... I wonder if he might see our rooms. So sorry. Uh, will you register first? <clears throat> uh, adjust the name and address. <clears throat> You've been quiet these last few months. It's October. We wanted to come out of season. Quite. Are we alone in the house? 
Oh, except for Commandant Shotcroft. Oh, you won't mind him, will you? He's a regular. I'm sure we shan't. Well, people say the house wouldn't be the same without Commandant Shotcroft. What's that bell? Practice. Do you mean there'll be more of them later? Oh, yes, but, but never mind. Uh, let me show you to your room. Uh, sorry, there's no porter. <sighs> Is this the quietest room you have? What about the other side of the house? This is the other side of the house. Um, is it a church? Uh, St. Gustlax. Over there. Darling, they'll soon stop. They're only practicing. But if you don't mind. They have ways of their own in Hollyhaven. It's a very pretty room. I adore four posters. Thank you. We'll take it. Mm -hmm. What time's dinner? 7.30. You'll have time for a drink in the bar first. We certainly have. It's only six. Actually, I like church bells. All very well. But very distracting on one's honeymoon. Not mine. Mm. Oh. <sighs> Let's explore. Well, hadn't you better unpack? I ought to. But I'm not going to. Not until I've seen the sea. Oh, all right. Good heavens! It's like warriors fighting in the sky. Do you think the sea's down there? Well, I imagine so. The street seems to end in nothing. That'll be the sea. Um, too late now. It's getting dark. It doesn't matter. Come on. Well, not really my sort of thing. Oh, Gerald. There's no one about. <laughs> <sighs> oh, isn't it beautiful? The sea. Well, not only. Everything but the sea. The sea's invisible. Oh, you can smell it. I certainly can't hear it. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <sighs> You know, it's like there's two churches. There often can be in an old town like this. It is another church. Impossible. They wouldn't have practice ringing on the same night. Well, I can hear one lot of bells with my left ear and another lot with my right. The whole population must be ringing them. Good for them. Let's go down on the beach and look for the sea. We'll just go straight on until we find it. Careful, darling. It's too dark now. These stones are slippery. Here, take my hand. I'm all right. We don't want to pull each other over. You're right, Prin. About the smell. Healthy sea smell. <sighs> Nothing healthy about that. Gerald, where is it? I think what sort of a seaport is it that has no sea? Oh, look! They put the lights on in the town. We've come too far. Look how far we've come. Friend? <sighs> oh! Friend! Friend! Sorry, darling. I stood on something. Oh, are you all right? I think so. Oh, the smell's worse than ever. I think it's coming from what I stepped on. My foot went right in, and, and then there was the smell. Oh, I've never known anything like it. Oh, sorry, darling. Oh, let's go away. Let's go back, don't you think? I'm very disappointed, Gerald. I think that seaside attraction should include the sea. I think the whole place is a disappointment. I really must have... What are you doing? Get that stuff off. We'll go somewhere else. I don't want to go somewhere where you've been before. I suppose all the churches practice on the same night to, to get it over with. To see who can ring the loudest. Oh, there wasn't much of it. And it could have been worse. But at least the dishes were hot. Do you think Mrs. Pascoe had been 
Oh, yes. <laughs> Since lunchtime. Yesterday lunchtime, I should imagine. <laughs> <laughs> coffee room. Well, why does that sign say coffee room uh, when this one says coffee will only be served in the lounge? Oh, it's the Lucius and on Lucendo principle. Oh, that explains everything. I wonder where we sit. Well, since there's no one else around, I should say we could take our pick. No, oh, the Lucius and non Lucendo principle is the principle of calling white black. Not at all. Oh. On the contrary. I'm sorry, we didn't see you there. The word black comes from an ancient root, which means to bleach. Oh, I stand corrected. Why are you here at all? We're on holiday. We prefer it out of season. I presume that you are Commandant Shotcroft? No need to presume. I'm going anyway. We didn't see you at dinner. My meals are prepared half an hour before the rest come in. I don't like eating in company. Perhaps you'll excuse me. Well... You'll have to ring if you want service. Too many other people ringing, I should say. I'll do it. Didn't see you in the bar. Must have missed us in the crowd. Crowd? Well... We'd, uh, like some coffee. Coffee is served in the lounge. Oh, surely, just this once. All right. Oh, Lord, they're driving me mad. Darling, it's not doing us any harm. I think it's rather cosy. Oh. Don't sit like that, friend. Why ever not? Oh. Someone might come in. Oh, there's no one here, except the Colonel. Commandant. I thought he looked like a monkey. Let's forget the coffee. I'll get us something stronger. What will you have? Anything you like. Whatever you have. I don't quite see why they have to keep the place like a hothouse. <sighs> when I come back, we'll sit somewhere else. Men wear too many clothes, darling. Hello? <laughs> ah, Mrs. Basco. Are you all right? Uh, what can I get you? A, a cognac, please. A double and a kumu. Oh. Allow me. Oh, okay. But but I must pour it. And um and a and a comal. Oh. That's three and six. Yes. Mr. Banstead, may I come and sit with you and your wife in the lounge just just for a few moments. Well uh Do you leave me, Hilda? Don't you leave me back here. Mr. Pasco, good evening. Don, you go back in Hilda. and I'll, I'll come in a moment. Uh, um, uh, excuse me. Uh, the cobble. No, 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 it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, there you go. Oh. Is my wife all right? Shh. She's sleeping. Why are you standing there? She's very beautiful. Can I get you a drink? Nothing to drink. He was a fine man once. Don't think otherwise. Pasco? Uh-huh. But my type? A solid officer. DSO and bar, DFC and bar. And now bar only. Whatever she told you, it's a lie. They didn't come here for the sea air. Speaking of the sea, doesn't it go out too far? We went for a walk before dinner. He got into trouble. He was fixed. He wasn't the kind of man to know about human nature and all its rottenness. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. This can't be the best place for him. It's the worst. For him or anyone else. It's certainly a very noisy place. Why did you have to come tonight of all nights? This doesn't happen often. Once a year... Well, they should have told us. They never accepted bookings when Pasco was in charge. They've no right to. 
Well, I suppose she thought she couldn't turn away business. It's not a matter that should be left to a woman. Well, not much alternative, surely. At heart, women are creatures of darkness all the time. My wife doesn't mind the bells. In fact, she rather likes them. Take her away, man! In a day or two, perhaps. I admit that we're disappointed with Hollyhaven. Now! While there's still time, this instant! They can hardly go on practicing all night. Practicing? And what else? They're ringing to wake the dead. <laughs> no, they are! That's a figure of speech. Not in Hollyhaven. I beg your pardon? No one can tell you how long they have to go on ringing. It varies from year to year, I don't know why. You should be all right up to midnight. In the end, the dead awake, first one or two, then all of them. Tonight, even the sea draws back. In a place like this, there are always several drowned each year. Most of them come not from the water, but the earth. It is not a pretty sight. You can't even imagine it. No one can. Are you saying we should leave? I haven't got a car. Then you'd better walk. With her? She's young and strong. She's 20 years younger than you, and therefore 20 years more important. Yes, I agree. What about you? I've lived here some time now. I know what to do. The Pascos are drunk. There's nothing in the world to fear if you're thoroughly drunk. But you're not drinking yourself? Not since I came to Hollyhaven. I lost the knack. <sighs> oh, what fun! The bells are still ringing. I don't think there's anything more to say. You've still got time. Good evening. What have you still got time for? Is he one of those religious types? Was he trying to convert you? Uh, something like that, Finn. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so tired. Um, shall we go to bed? We have to... I think... If you're tired, it's probably a good thing. On our honeymoon? I mean, with these bells. God knows when they'll stop. Oh, look. The Commandant's left his book. Fifteen Decisive Battles of the World. Oh, I'll take it up to him. Uh, no. No, I'll go. Commandant, I don't understand. I need to speak to you. Commandant! What are you doing? I'm bringing this for the Commandant. Oh, that. He's been reading it since he got here. When he gets to the end, he starts again. This is his room? Yes, just go in. <laughs> Commandant! Commandant so seriously, you know. He's Don's and I's mascot. You should have told us about this. This annual event, before accepting our booking. Oh, it's not always the same night. Oh, poor Commandant Shotcroft. It pushed him out, you know. Cashier, court martial, muffled drums, the, the work. We're leaving. Fred, come upstairs and pack. We're not staying. Darling! We'll pay for the room, of course, Mrs. Pascoe. Please, order me a car. Oh! Well, what's the matter, Gerald? What's happened? If you want to be paid, make out the bill. I I'll need your help if I'm going to pack. Don't go. Please don't go. Not now. It's too late. Too late for what? You said you wanted a car. You're too late. Come on, Finn. You'll be all right if you stay. Really, you will. We'll try the front door. They've been ringing too long. Oh, I wish they'd stop. Oh, we'll go upstairs. Oh, God. It's pandemonium. And we're not going out in it. We might will them to stop. It would be better if they rang all night. You see? Oh, God. Let's go somewhere else tomorrow. 
Shall we go to bed? Darling, you're shivering. Shh. Kiss me. What's the matter? I can't. But it's a honeymoon. It's not that. Friend, you don't understand. We must just lie still. The Commandant told me. What? Did he tell you it was a mortal sin? <laughs> oh. Oh, don't. Oh. Oh, friend. Oh. oh. Commandant, warn me. We should have gone. Nowhere to go. I, I don't suppose they'll bother us. We will sit it out, no matter what happens. Put the light on. Yes. Power's gone. We must go back to bed. Gerald, come and help me. Uh, here. There. There. No more, love. No. Hold me. They're going towards the sea. We must think of something else. It's only till tomorrow. They can't actually be dangerous or... Well, or it would be stopped. Yes, of course. What the hell are they doing now? I, th I think they're dancing. She's safe. Small thanks to you. Is it thanks to you? She was caught up in it, dancing with the rest. Were they... Were some she of them... She was between two of them. Each had one of her hands. What did you do? I did what had to be done. I hope I was in time. You'll find her downstairs. I'm grateful. <laughs> Such a silly thing to say. But what else is there? Can you walk? Yes, I... Yes, I think so. Come on, then. <sighs> Friend. Friend. Darling, look at you. Here I am. Not to worry. For God's sake, man, get something on her. She's almost naked. Yes. Um, Mrs. Pascoe. Mrs. Pascoe. She's very beautiful. I'll get a blanket. Come on. Let's get you to bed. I'm not tired now. I'm not tired at all.
check the trains. We shouldn't have to wait long. There's plenty of people about today. There's space at the Crown. Little place I know in Cambridge. I know it's somewhere I've been before. Without you, I mean. But if you don't... It doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter at all. Oh. Look at those men digging over there. Hmm. Just ploughing a field. Cambridge is not just a university town, you know. There's... No. They're not ploughing. Look at the sign. We missed it last night. <clears throat> Although the university itself is splendid, there's the river and... New Municipal Cemetery. Ah, here's the station. <laughs> They're not ploughing. They're sowing. La, 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 la. Mm. Hold on. In Ringing the Changes, Gerald was George Baker, Fryn, Fiona Allen, and Mrs. Pascoe, Barbara Shelley. The Commandant was Michael Cochran, and the Station Master, Mark Gatiss. All other parts were played by members of the cast. Original music was composed by Joby Talbot and special sound design by O2, with thanks to the bell ringers of Upper Chute. Ringing the Changes by Robert Aikman was dramatised for radio by Jeremy Dyson and Mark Gatiss and produced in Manchester by Pauline Harris. <laughs>